That. Uh, the Honourable yeah. Member Jamie Lee Ross in reply. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, Mr Speaker, those of us who live outside of Wellington take a plane flight up and down the country every week, and we sit next to a whole range of people. A few months ago, I had the opportunity to sit next to uh, Winston Peters uh, on the plane. And, um, you know, we have a lot of heckling backwards and forwards, and we, we throw some barbs his way because he's on the op opposition side of the House. But I have to say that plane flight was probably one of the most interesting 45 minutes I've had on a plane because with 33 years experience in this house or 33 years he entered prior to my entering he has a lot of experience and you do learn a lot as a new member. Uh, Mr Speaker I appreciate the, the kind words um, he said. Uh, the reality is though we have 25 ministers in our caucus but they don't have a monopoly on good ideas. They have a lot of good ideas and I believe this government's doing a lot of good things for the country but the caucus the <laughs> The caucus does allow backbench MPs. <coughs> the caucus does allow backbench MPs to put members' bills into That's the right. ballot. And the reason why we do that is because we make up half of the parliament and on members' days we don't just want to be talking about things the opposition wants to be talking about. When, when, the, when, when the member asked whether the, the National Party supported it, the minister said yes. The, the, the members behind me all said yes. The this has been through the National Party caucus. The National Party caucus does support this. Uh, Mr Speaker, and so although, although in a perfect world everything would be done by the government, there are backbench MPs like myself who want to push things through, and I was fortunate enough to have this idea approved by my caucus. I want to just touch on a couple of other points. Uh, Winston Peters talked about the low number of people who would be affected uh, by Section 97. He's absolutely right. About 8 to 9 per cent of the private sector workforce is unionised. They are the only people who benefit from the protections of Section 97. But everybody who wants to work during a strike is restricted by Section 97 from being able to do that. That's why I say that this bill is actually pro-worker because it allows people who wish to work during a strike the ability to do that. And I believe in freedom. I believe in flexibility. I believe in people being able to choose their own destiny where they can, and that's why I support repealing Section 97 and I support uh, this bill. I do note that when this was last debated in the Parliament in the year 2000, some 13 years ago, that the position of New Zealand First was that it opposed Section 97. I've been through the Hansard, I've been through the press releases. Peter Brown, the Deputy Leader at the time, did a lot of heavy lifting on that bill at the time, and, and New Zealand First position was firmly opposed to Section 97. So my plea to um, the New Zealand First Party tonight is give New Zealanders an opportunity through a select committee to submit on this. Uh, if it's difficult to vote yes or no on it, there's a third option potentially, but I'm not going to tell um, the Right Honourable Gentleman uh, how he should vote, but that's the third option as well. New Zealand First has, New Zealand First has taken a very principled position on this uh, particular issue 13 years ago. I'd ask that um, they consider it again. Mr Speaker, um, the number of strikes and lockouts uh, in New Zealand is also an issue that has been raised. And yes, at the moment, during an economic downturn, the number of strikes is relatively low. But in 2000, in 2000 the number of strikes and lockouts was at 21. Within a few years of the Employment Relations Act 2000 being passed, the number of workplace uh, disputes, the number of workplace uh, stoppages actually tripled. And Mr Speaker, my fear is that once the economy really starts to pick up again, we will see a larger number of workplace stoppages coming about. And with workplace stoppages comes employees who aren't working, and under Section 97, with workplace stoppages, comes people who wish to work during that workplace stoppage but are restricted by a piece of legislation that stops them from doing that. It's a law that never existed in New Zealand for over 100 years. It's only the last 12 or 13 years that this law has existed. The first, second, third and fourth Labour governments did not see fit to have such a restriction. The fifth Labour government did. I say, Mr Speaker, it's time to repeal that section in the Employment Relations Act. Let people work during a strike or lockout if they want to. It will benefit workers in the long run. Thank you. The question is that the motion be agreed to.
Those of that opinion will please say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Aye. The ayes have it. The noes have it. Party vote. Clerk will please conduct the party vote. We've had one request from the opposition senior whip. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 33 votes opposed. Green Party. 14 votes opposed. New Zealand First. 7 votes opposed. Māori Party. Three votes opposed. Mana. One vote opposed. You can do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no. You must Act New Zealand. The members. Well, of the members here, the members should cast his own vote. Thank you. Kotahi te poti kore whakai. Act New Zealand. One vote in favour. United Future. One vote opposed. Brendan Horan. One vote opposed. Honourable members, the ayes are 60, the noes are 61. The motion is not agreed to. Mr. Yeah. Speaker, point of order. Uh, point of order, the right honourable. Speaker, as you speaker. know, the House is the master of its own destiny. The next, the next piece of legislation is rather seriously important. I think most members think that, and I think it should commence at a time and a day when the public of this country can hear it, rather than have some important issues. And this, these issues not have been important, but to have all these important issues almost in the dead of night being discussed. So I seek to leave for the House to rise and consider this the next time we have such a sitting day. Well, the, the House is a master of its own destiny. The member has sought leave for the House to adjourn for the evening, given the nature of the next piece of legislation. Is there any objection to that course of action being taken? There is none. Honourable members, the People's House stands adjourned until 2pm Thursday the 14th of November 2013. Hari Ra Pomarui. Good evening.